Oh man, Grand Theft Auto 3, the granddaddy of the open world genre. What more can I say about this game that already hasn't been said by countless others on this platform? We all know the legacy that Grand Theft Auto 3 has left behind way back in 2001. It revolutionized the open world genre in gaming and inspired many other developers in what an open world game could be. But if you've ever gone back and tried replaying GTA 3 nowadays, you'd probably be turned off by how rudimentary the game could be and how difficult it could be at times as well, especially towards the late game with Rockstar's notorious difficulty spikes that they like to throw at you towards the end game. And hell, Rockstar's deflated edition that they shit out just over a year ago at this point didn't really help much in that regard in terms of difficulty, with there now being a shit ton of bugs that weren't originally present in the game because Grove Street Games, the devs who Rockstar decided to give the keys to instead of, you know, doing it themselves, they thought it would be a great idea to use their crappy mobile ports as a base for these quote unquote remasters. And all it did was ruin the reputation of a company that we've all grown to trust over the years. But one GTA fan by the name of Rob, or Moonboy as they're known on YouTube, had the genius idea of not only taking the task of subtly remastering and expanding many different aspects of Grand Theft Auto 3, but also making the game three times harder for both speedrunners and casual players alike, in ways that make the game a way more tightened experience. All while going that further mile of improving the base game itself in many different ways, making this mod my new definitive way of replaying GTA 3 from this point forward. The mod I'm talking about in question is called Grand Theft Auto Tightened Thrice. Now, GTA Titan Thrice is not the first in its series. In fact, the mod author has already made a total conversion for GTA Vice City, very similarly named GTA Titan Vice. And they're already hard at work on releasing a similar one for San Andreas in the future, appropriately named GTA Titan Andreas. And they're not only named this way because it makes you feel like you have a tightened vice grip around your metaphorical balls the entire time you're playing, but the gameplay is tightened up dramatically, and not only requires quick thinking on the fly during a lot of its redesigned missions, but was very much designed with speedrunners in mind, with some missions having to be beat in completely different ways than you might have remembered how they were done before. Now, if you've ever tried replaying GTA 3 in recent years like I was talking about before, you'd probably be wondering why the hell anyone would want to play a harder version of this game that was already pretty difficult to begin with. And I honestly thought the same thing when I first saw this mod. And while yes, the mod was more or less designed for speedrunners in mind, I wanted to approach this mod from the perspective of a more casual classic GTA enjoyer. And from what I found is while, yeah, there's no doubt that this mod makes the game incredibly hard in a lot of different ways, there was way more to this mod than someone just adding more enemies to a mission and increasing their health values, or something basic like that. The way the mod author has redesigned most of the missions in this game not only make a bit more sense in some ways within the context of the 3D era GTA titles as a whole, but they also add a bit more to the ridiculousness factor to the way that missions play out. But with its tighter mission design, makes the difficulty feel more like it is your fault for screwing something up, rather than some random difficulty spike that older GTAs are known to throw at you. But not only that, the mod author also went as far as changing almost every single aspect of the game in some way or another, subtly remastering this title in many different ways. From subtle quality of life changes by having pre-installed fixes in the mod, like things like the widescreen fix, silent patch, and even Project 2D effects to prevent loading times and increase the draw distance in the game. But they also went as far as changing up the location of every single pickup in the game, from things like weapons and armor to police bribes, as well as every single hidden package in the game being moved to a different spot of the map. Plus, now throughout certain points of the story, Claude's going to be able to unlock new outfits to change up his look every now and then, meaning Claude is not going to be running around in the same old outfit for over two weeks straight. You can also find a bunch of new hidden vehicles around the map as well to add over to each of your garages, making even longtime fans of Grand Theft Auto 3 feel like they're exploring a new rendition of Liberty City. And with that being said, there's also a ton of new interior locations dotted around the map that were never previously in the original game, with most of these being used in some way across a ton of different missions that were reworked in one way or another. Like for example, at an early point in the game, we're tasked with taking out some of the local triads in the area for one of our mission givers. 
And in the original mission, you just go to an alley and pretty much take everyone out from what I remember. But in this mod, we invade one of their distribution locations and clear out the entire place to grab a package and of course get the hell out of there afterwards. Albeit, you have to be extremely careful on this mission, of course, not to get blasted around every corner by some dude hiding with a shotgun. But the fact that it takes place within this entire meatpacking plant made the entire thing feel completely new from anything I've ever experienced in the original game. There's also an entire apartment complex in the map that you can enter, different office complexes, as well as new locations that are also out in the open world that you may visit on a mission or two. And all of these small additions to the game's open world expands and enhance things way more than Rockstar's petty attempts at expanding and enhancing their own titles recently. He ain't lying. And it's honestly commendable how far this mod author has gone to completely change up the gameplay experience of Grand Theft Auto 3. And trust me, this is barely even scratching the surface of what this mod has to offer. I haven't even talked about some of the other missions yet, but don't worry, we will get there eventually. There's also a lot of other new stuff that's added to the game, like even new gameplay mechanics that you'd see from future GTA titles like the ability to shoot out tires and even break the windshields of vehicles to shoot inside of them. Which, yeah, is a small quality of life feature, but it really adds to the gameplay and even the difficulty at times, with your vehicle not being able to fully protect you once you're inside of it. And I mean, to be granted, if you've ever played GTA 3, the vehicles are made out of paper mache anyway. And trust me, they still are in this mod. But speaking of vehicles, there's also a ton of vehicles that were added to this one that were either cut from GTA 3 originally or were added over from Liberty City Stories. There's new four door vehicles that look like they were beta vehicles added back into the game, as well some great additions like the Ghost from Liberty City Stories, the Ballista Compact from future GTA titles, and so so much more that I don't really want to spoil just so you can experience what's available in this mod because there's just so many to list here. There's also new NPCs that you'll find roaming around the map that were cut from the original game, like NPCs that are walking around with instruments that don't really play them, at least from what I've seen, but still it's a nice addition and adds a bit of variety to the world and makes it feel that much more alive than it used to be. And speaking of music, all of the radio stations in this mod have been reworked in some way or another. From every single radio station being reworked to include some music from Liberty City Stories, and even the head radio tracks from GTA 2, there's also two new radio stations, with one of them playing right off the bat at the start of the game, with that being Plastic Nectar, which generally plays a mix of tracks from two classic video games from around this era, which are Buck Bumble and Lego Island Extreme Sports. And honestly, this station is just a bop. It's definitely become my new favorite. And then there's also Bang Radio, which I think is just a joke radio station. Pretty sure it's just the mod author singing different songs, just to avoid copyright. It's hilarious. You have to check it out. Just come along, baby, take my hand. But that means no matter what, you're gonna have both classic tracks and some new ones to bump while you're causing some mayhem in the streets of Liberty City. And even the pedestrians and the gangs that you come across are going to be way more violent towards you than they used to be. Meaning that some cars will run into you with aggressive driver NPC behaviors just like they did in San Andreas. And the gangs that you come across around town will pack some extra heat throughout the game. And as you move throughout the story, they'll even upgrade their weapons, making traversing around the open world at later points way more tricky than it used to be, meaning you're gonna have to get used to learning about the different alleyways in this game. And some alleyways you may have used in the past have been changed up just a little bit just to mess with your muscle memory from this game. But hey, at least this game lets us live up to the Claude Speed's name and automatically gives us infinite sprint right from the start, which you're definitely gonna need as speed is the name of the game in this mod. <laughs> and most missions are gonna require you to act fast in completing your objective. I mean, even after all this time, I haven't even talked about some of the missions yet, but to be honest, I really don't want to spoil too much about this mod because it's best experienced on your own, in my opinion. But I do want to mention at least the starting mission, just to kind of give you an idea of how many things have changed up just on the starting mission alone. And that, plus the visual spoilers I've had throughout the video, should kind of give you an idea as to how many changes there are throughout the story. So let's check it out right from the very start of the game, you're gonna notice a ton of changes that not only up the ante and the challenge quite a bit, but they do so in a way that actually fits within the context of the game's story. I know a place on the edge of the red light district where we can lay low, but first let's find a change of clothes. My hands are all messed up, so you better drive, brother. 
somehow just works. And for example, right from the very start of the game, after the bomb goes off on the bridge, connecting the first two islands, instead of just driving a ball back to his apartment to get changed and then head over to Luigi's bar and, you know, be completely safe while we do all that, we instead need to first get a change of clothes before heading back over to 8-Ball's apartment. And uh-oh, guess what? We of course have a wanted level, which would make sense we just escaped a prison transport bus. So while we're driving around town with a wanted level, we need to find and steal one of these laundry vans, which, by the way, the laundromat is owned by the local triad. And once we find one and both get in the van, the triads from this point will now be hostile towards us for the rest of the game. And now, they typically don't become hostile towards us until like maybe six or seven missions into the game, but no, we're number one on the triads hit list right from the start, just for stealing some clothes. I don't know why we didn't just go to a clothing store, but hey, this is Titan Thrice we're talking about. But anyways, we take those clothes all the way back over to 8-Ball's apartment, get introduced to where we can save and so forth, and then once 8-Ball tells us to head over to Luigi's, the game doesn't even give us a map marker for Luigi's bar, so you kind of have to rely on muscle memory a bit to get over to Luigi's bar, or if you've never played GTA 3 before, unless you get lucky, you're probably never gonna find the place. Just another way this mod likes to fuck with you, and I love it. But after that, Luigi tasks us with picking up Misty as our first job to prove that we're loyal enough to work for him. And when we grab a car and head over to get Misty, well what do you know, she's surrounded by a couple of triads who somehow got word of us coming to get her. So you gotta somehow dodge these dudes or run them over or something like that, and then drive her back over to the club and get our first bit of paper, making us a big man with a big W. Okay. And that's just one example of how the mission structure of this game gets flipped over on its head, which keeps the missions feeling completely fresh. And yes, that does include side missions, by the way. So expect the taxi missions and so many other ones to play out completely different, while also staying very true to the original Grand Theft Auto 3 experience making this mod stand above so many others in its class. And honestly, I cannot recommend this mod enough. You need to check this out if you haven't played it yet. Also, I wanted to give a huge shout out to English Ben, the incredible speedrunner who's been with the GTA community for quite a while now. They made an incredible mission guide for this mod that can really help you out if you get into a bind on some of these missions. And it honestly helped me out a couple times here and there. So big shout out to them. And also, of course, a big shout out to the mod author Rob, of course. Go check out both of their channels. I'll leave links down in the description down below. And if you want to keep up to date on the progress for the upcoming Titaned mod for San Andreas, then definitely go follow Rob's channel and subscribe to them as well if you want to keep up with the progress of that mod, because it definitely looks promising so far. And while, yeah, this is not only just a mod that makes this game more difficult and even more ball-bustingly harder than it needs to be, it still feels like a true love letter to Grand Theft Auto 3 and just the classic 3D era titles as a whole, and even speedrun of the classic GTAs, and I feel like it doesn't get enough love, and I'm honestly really excited to go back and play Titan Vice and see where Titan Dreas goes in the future. So if you have an original copy of GTA 3 on PC, or have them on Steam, shitty Rockstar launcher, or can acquire them in some random way, and just a little bit of brain power to follow the installation instructions. I cannot encourage you enough, play this mod. It is such a great time, even if it can be infuriating at times. The amount of dedication put into this project to reinvigorate something new into this title makes it stand out amongst so many other total conversions out there for this series. And also, in case you're wondering, you can add more mods to this as well, which is why you probably noticed my vehicle's camera moving around throughout the video. And look, I just can't stand the original vehicle's camera, so don't judge me. I'll add that mod down in the description too if you need it. Anyways, if you have made it this far, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing more mods for other games in the future. Who knows, maybe I'll cover Titan Vice after this one and check it out. And hey, leave a like and let me know down in the comments if you played this before or not. I'd love to see if anyone else has seen what is in store with this mod and i'd love to hear about it so let me know in the comments below if you beat it or anything like that anyways guys thank you so much for watching this video i gotta go get back over to some starfield and of course getting work done on my next video but i'll catch you later blado out fantastic